Hello, my name is Ashley Share. I'm the founder and CEO of Share Love Fun. Today we're going to do a 10 minute meditation called Naming Emotions for Incarcerated Women. The human brain seems to be rigged against us sometimes. Our brain's alarm seems to be ringing and it's not always helpful. Regulating emotions is not always easy to do. Our emotion regulation part of our brain is in the front of our head, our prefrontal cortex. And it doesn't even mature until we're about the age of 25 years old. So especially if you are incarcerated between the ages of 18 to 25, or even maybe some individuals that are teenagers, even younger, maybe watching this. Justice involved juveniles. The prefrontal cortex of your brain is not even fully developed when you're under 25. That is the mood regulation, the emotion regulation. Those emotions are what sometimes get us in trouble and that's not even scientifically fully developed before the age of 25. That's just something to keep in mind, to give you perspective of why it might be so hard to conform and how knowing the science can lead you to self-mastery. If you ever feel overly emotional or you cannot explain why you did something, it is actually because of your brain's wiring sometimes. There's a philosopher that says that the way that we are wired makes it so whenever we're in a particular kind of situation, if all the things were equal and we were in the situation again, that the same thing would happen because of our hard wiring. Now, like some people believe that or some people don't. It's not saying there's no free will. It's just saying that like, if you stack up dominoes exactly the same way every time and flick it with exactly the same force and exactly the same spot every time, every time it will fall exactly the same way. And so people can say because of the way we're wired and because of our background or this or that, when you put yourself in a particular situation maybe the outcome was obvious so this is not to say we can't take responsibility for what happens it just needs to it just shows us that we have to uh, really use methods to get self mastery because we're predisposed a little bit to our hard wiring that's just an opinion. You take from it what serves you. Um, I don't have the right answer. We're all just on this journey, um, each finding our own way, each trying to survive in our own way. Um, the information I offer you, to some people may resonate, to others it may not. It's more about um, trying to share knowledge so that it may stimulate your own um, creativity and inspiration and inspire you to find your own way to the best version of you. Research says shows that you can make emotions less overwhelming by simply naming them. So I think that that um, a classic example of that is that uh, you know like dogs may be scared of thunder and lightning but as humans, we can say that's thunder and that's lightning. And just by naming it, it's less scary. When it's just mystery sound, that's a little scary. What is mystery sound? But by naming it, that's thunder, that's lightning. It could be less scary. So this is sort of in that same vein. Acknowledging emotions reduces their power. Think about how sometimes we even use name calling to, um, to assert dominance over something or someone. So having that big rush of emotion, that big anger and being like, oh, so now I feel angry now. Like, oh, now the angry monster has come. That sort of um, 
kind of embarrasses the anger in, in, in a way. And that is a way to gain control over your anger, for example. Acknowledging emotions reduces their power and lets you respond deliberately rather than being hijacked by your emotions. Why are we talking about this and why is it important? It's important because you wanna be the boss and emotions unregulated can get people into trouble. So to stay out of trouble, we need to respond deliberately, methodically, and not react. And how can we do that? Because sometimes it seems very, very hard. And so we can do that by learning tools. One tool is counting backwards. Five, four, three, two, one, to calm down the nervous system. Another tool, which we're exploring now, is naming emotions, to belittle them, to put them in their place, to dominate those emotions so you are in charge and not the emotions um, doing a joy ride on your body. Please find a comfortable posture. Even if your mind is restless or you feel overly emotional, try to find some gentleness in your body. If you can't sit still, you might choose to sway or walk slowly or even rock. Take a few deep breaths, feeling what it's like to breathe. Let your breathing be natural and notice how your body feels. From time to time, my voice may be absent and that's an opportunity to internalize your own experience. However you feel, try to notice it just as it is without needing to eliminate it, figure it out or change in any way. When you're ready, gently ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? You don't have to come up with the perfect answer. It doesn't even have to be a word. Try to give it a name aloud in your head for how you feel right now. So by it doesn't have to be a word means like you can call it ooga wooga or whatever. It's just trying to, if you feel a rise of emotion, try to associate a sound with it, whether that sound is a word or, or not a real word. Then explore how this feels in your body. What does anger feel like? And just try to breathe through it. With each breath, you can name it and kind of show it who's boss. That you know it's there, that you know that these feelings start in the prefrontal cortex of the brain. You know that if you're under 25, that your prefrontal cortex isn't fully formed and you're just noticing how it feels, remembering you're in charge. Where do you feel sadness or joy? Is boredom heavy or is boredom light? As you pay attention to the emotion, you might notice that it changes and that your mind doesn't want to stay with your body. Your mind might get caught up in thinking, blaming, or worrying. That's okay. You can name those emotions or actions too. And whenever you notice that your mind has wandered, gently bring your attention back to your breathing, your body and this moment right now. When you're finished, 
Notice how you feel. You might even have a name for that too. Have a blessed day. Namaste. May the light in me be the light in you.